charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never-dying soul to save and fit it for the sky, on me with jealous care, as in my sight to church that meets here in Malden. It's good to see each and every one out this morning. We're glad you took the time out of your day to come worship our Lord and Spirit in the truth. Just a few announcements this morning. Um, if you're here visiting, visiting with us today, we'd like you to know that you are our honored guest, and if you would, please fill out a, a visitor card you located in the front of you on the back of the pew where put it in the offering basket where we can have a record of your visit. <coughs> We'd like to thank Pam for the December bulletins. Thank you for your hard work, Pam. We have just a few more announcements. If you do not have a bulletin, they're located on the table, on the foyer, on the left as you leave the auditorium. Please grab one. There's a lot of uh, good information in there and a lot of our, our members are in need of prayer. Just a few announcements we have today. Uh, first, we'd like to talk about the sick. Kathy Dust uh, and Lorraine Foster have COVID, so let's keep them in our prayers. Gracie is a friend of Allison's. Um, she's 22, 22 years old, and is in the ho hospital with septus. So let's keep her in our prayers. That is a blood disease. That some of you don't know what septus is. Uh, uh, on a sad note, we Got a call this morning that Dorothy Pierce uh, passed away last night and her family will be coming to town and visiting with the funeral home on Wednesday. Uh, so we'll try to get the information out. We don't know when the service will will be, but we're thinking it may be late this week is what we're thinking. But we'll get the information out as soon as we know. We'd also like to, uh, to keep the Mosley family in our prayers. Uh, he was in a terrible car accident. He is in the hospital. He is doing better. He does have some more surgeries coming, but he is getting better. So let's keep him in our prayers as well. Also would like a couple dates we'd like to give you. Uh, starting on January 1st, our evening services will be starting at 6 p.m. Uh, to my knowledge, we're doing this to try to get uh, our attendance up just a little bit. We're hoping that that will that will bring some more families out. I think that was the motivation behind that. So if you could try to come be with us on Wednesday evenings uh, and on Sunday evenings. Also Saturday, December 10th at 1030, we'll be having our brunch and our ornament exchange. Um, everyone is invited, so we'd like to see you all come out for that. And then Sunday, uh, December 7th, after the evening worship, we'll be filling sunshine baskets um, so if you have any questions or would you like to participate with that, you can see Vicki. Um, she'll have all the information that we have on that. Uh, that is all the announcements I have for this morning in our worship service this morning. Uh, Brother Rusty Maddox will be uh, reading our scripture. Uh, Joel Foster will be leading us in our song service. Dennis Stratton will be having our lesson. Uh, Joe Warren will be closing us our worship service in prayer. And, and if you would bow with me, we'll go to prayer. Uh, as we as we open up the worship service. <clears throat> Almighty God and our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be the great and holy name. 
<coughs> Lord, we come in prayer with thankful hearts, peace, and joy. Grateful for this opportunity we have to gather here with our Christian brothers and sisters to worship you in spirit and in truth on this first day of the week as your word commands us to do. We are thankful, Father, for the church that meets here in Mold and also the church the world over. We pray, Father, at this time that the truth will always be taught in your church. We're thankful, Father, for this great country we live in and the many freedoms and blessings that we enjoy. Pray, Father, that as we take the time to, to, to worship you today, Father, that, that we put the things of this world behind us, that we would clear our thoughts and that we would concentrate on this worship service. We pray, Father, this morning for each and every one that was in, that's in the bulletin that, that are eating our prayers. We have many that are sick, Father. We just pray that you would give them the strength and the, the encouragement they need to, that they would get well and, and be back with us to worship you. We pray, Father, at this time for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for the Pierce family at this time. We pray, Father, that, that they would look to your word for the comfort they need. Lord, we know that, Lord, you meant a lot to all of us, and, and she was definitely one of your children, Lord. Just pray, Father, again uh, at this time that as we enter into this worship service, that we would we would place our minds and our thoughts on the worship service, and that we would uplift our voices unto Thee as we sing these songs, these hymns unto Thee. We pray, Father, that as that our brother Dennis would have a ready recollection of the lesson that he has prepared and studied this week. We pray that he would be able to deliver it to us in a way that we'd be able to take what we need to apply it to our Christian lives. So we may grow in the knowledge and the truth of your word, be able to teach others of it. Dear Lord, we just pray that as we live in a world that's just gone to pop, Father, we just pray that we would always continue to be that shining light, that we would always stand up for what is right, and that we would continue being the best Christians that we can be. Dear Lord, we pray at this time for all of our first responders, we pray those in our military, both here and abroad. We just pray, Lord, that during these holidays that we could just have world peace and that our soldiers, our men and women could come home for the holidays <coughs> safely, spend time with their families. Dear Lord, we just pray at this time for, for our country. <laughs> we just pray that there would be more love and less hate, more peace and less war. Lord, as we go through the further exercise of this service this morning, we just pray that your will will be done both here as it is in heaven. We pray for your forgiveness, Lord, when we fall short of being the Christians we expect it to be. This prayer we are asked this morning, we ask in the loving and strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brother Joel. Good morning. 682 682 <clears throat> To God be the glory great things he hath done so loved he the world that he gave us his son who Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. 
Supper 
will not continue in prayer for the fruit of the vine. That's right. Then the Father is more Jesus morning to the church for the blood. And we're at the table. And cross the cavity. Take this cup. Let us share it. And it calls me to many sins. This is Christ. Amen. Amen. Concludes the Lord's Supper. Another part of our worship service is given back to the Lord and He's blessed to each and every one of us here. If you would, I'd like to read 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 and 7. And it reads, But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according to his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, but God love a cheerful giver. I know how to pray for our offering. My kind Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity we have that we can give back the portion unto you that you bound for bless each and every one of us with. We pray as we give back at this time, we'll give back in a manner that's pleasing and loving in God's sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Two, six, seven. Two, six, seven. I believe in the one thing called Jesus. I believe he still Galilee. I believe.
that he's the answer for me. Yes, I believe in the one they call Jesus. I believe he died on Mount Calvary. And I If I walk in heaven's sun, 
change are gone. For our lesson, two, three, seven. <coughs> two, three, seven. <clears throat> Deeper than the ocean and wider than the sea is the grace of the Savior for sinners like me. Sent from the Father and it thrills my soul just to feel and to know that his blood makes me whole. His grace reaches me, yes, his grace reaches me, and will chapter 11, that's verse 6. And I am reading from the New American Standard Version. And it reads, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Our scripture reading bears out the importance of faith. Paul, even in Ephesians 2 and verse 8, said, For by grace you are saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. Paul also in Romans 5 and verse 1, he reminds us that we have peace with God through Christ, because we have been justified by faith. The Bible talks about many kinds of faith, a faith of simple belief. But a simple belief is not a saving faith. 
It's not the faith that is pleasing to God. For it is James that writes in James 2 and verse 19 that you believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. That word faith sometimes refers to the whole system of faith. The faith that we find in Jude verse 3, Beloved, I was eager to write to you about your com our common salvation. I found it necessary to write, appealing to you to contend for the first faith that was once delivered to the Son. These aren't the faiths I want to discuss this morning. The faith that I want to discuss this morning is a greater faith. It is a faith that is greater than what faith brought us here this morning to services. It is a faith that leaves with us. It goes home with us. It guides us through our week. It's there every moment of our life. It is our personal faith. For as Rusty read in Hebrews 11 and verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So it is important that we all develop a proper personal faith. Most people have some kind of faith some kind of a family religion. Even if you're an atheist, you have a religion. But all of us here, in one way, shape, or form, has had a religion. Whether our youth, we grew up in a denominational church, or we grew up in the Lord's church, we have the faith that oftentimes we get from our parents, our family. And oftentimes we are expected to follow in those footsteps. I guess you could say it's also kind of like uh, maybe the political parties that our families, our parents, grandparents may have followed. They would expect us to do the same thing. Many will say that we're not to question our family religion. We wouldn't want to offend our ancestors. Though probably our ancestors are probably, they're making, asking us, they're thinking to make that change. We certainly wouldn't want to offend our family. But an inherited religion can be wrong. An inherited religion is not a sound basis to hold our personal faith to. You remember Paul prior to his conversion, what his situation was. In Acts chapter 21, or 23 rather, Paul, he's giving a defense before the chief priests and the council. In verse 1, Paul says, Brothers, I've lived my life before God in all good conscience up to this day. And then a few verse chapters over, chapter 26 and verse 9, Paul standing before Agrippa. He said to him, I myself was convinced I ought to do many things in opposing the name of Jesus of Nazareth. But if you look at those statements and what Paul was referring to in those statements, we go back to Acts chapter 8 and verse 1 where Paul was consenting to the death of Stephen. And in Acts chapter 9 and the first two verses where Paul was seeking to get letters so that he would be able to persecute Christians in Damascus. Paul grew up as a Pharisee. Paul grew up under the teachings of Gamaliel. It was his family's religion, and he found it to be wrong. Off 
oftentimes we are close to our families and that family religion may be comforting, but it may not be saving. A lot of us have probably grown up being taught Bible stories in our Bible classes. I can remember growing up as a little boy in the Methodist Church in Middleburg, Maryland. We had a building in behind the, the small church building that all of our children's classes would be in. There were no walls inside. We were just separated by space. It is where we learned our stories. We never learned anything about the church. The material was well taught. And oftentimes that material was not taught with the whole truth. If I looked back today, I look back then, today, I would say that it didn't help teach a saving thing. <coughs> Paul in Romans 10 in verses 2 and 3. Paul speaking of the Jews, the ones that he knew, the ones he grew up with. And he said, I bear witness for them that they had a zeal for God not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. You know, there are so many who are working very hard at trying to please God, but they've been taught wrong. And in Acts 26 and verses 5 through 9, even Paul admits that he had this zeal for God. He was that Pharisee. He wanted to do everything he could. <coughs> but it all changed in an instant on a dirt road. It was there that he finally submitted to the righteousness of God. or realize his religion was not correct. What he was indoctrinated into was wrong. But we must also be aware. Have you ever questioned your faith? Were you made to think that questioning your faith was wrong? Do we wonder what our beliefs are? Do we wonder why we believe them in the first place? But friends, I'm here to tell you it is important that we have a questioning faith. We should never accept anything just because. We should not accept anything because my preacher said so. <coughs> How many of us sitting here this morning can explain what we believe to everyone else? I'm not talking the gospel message itself. But can we literally explain what we do and why we do it? We need to know why our practices are not like all the others. We should never accept any practice religiously without thus saying the Lord. A religion that will not stand up to examination is wrong. Friends, truth has nothing to fear. Even 
if it is placed under a microscope, we need to question our faith. We need to go to the right source. When Paul was teaching the brethren in Berea, it says that they received the word in readiness of mind. In other words, they were listening very closely. After they were listening very closely, they didn't sit there and argue with Paul about what was going on. They didn't sit there and say, you're wrong. This is, it's not what you're saying. It's, it's not the right thing. They literally went to God's word. They listened to what he had to say. They went to God's word to prove it. Made sure it was the truth. And John in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1, John says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. And he gives us the reason why for many false prophets have gone out into the world. It's amazing, 2,000 years ago, the apostles knew that people were going to fall away. That the church that Christ built, the foundation, would eventually have termites in it. Those who wanted to change things and tear things down. That's why it's so important for all of us within the sound of my voice, whether it's here in this building, whether it's out there over the internet, it doesn't matter. Search. Find the truth. Don't let someone tell you what the Bible says. Read it for yourself and study it for yourself. But when we find this, this is when God's faith becomes our personal faith. And certainly that faith may or may not be the faith that we inherited. It may not be the faith, or it may be the faith that we were indoctrinated with. Friends, this personal faith that we had that we will know will hold up so any examination will result from us questioning the faith. We question, we need to question our beliefs. We need to question our practices. We need to compare those things to the Bible. Our personal faith should not leave any doubt. Our own faith, that faith which we hold, is the only one that we can depend on for salvation. You know, it was our faith that led us to obey the gospel. But the faith that led us to obey the gospel will only get us so far. We have to develop our own personal faith to make sure that we have secured forever our home in heaven. We need to have the faith that will stand in judgment. We need to understand our faith. We need to understand that that faith, our personal faith, only comes by God's word. Romans 10, verse 17, the faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. But it also comes by our work of obedience. For in James 2 and verse 26, whereas the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Our faith must go beyond just believing. Our faith must be more than just a Sunday faith. It must be a faith that is with us each and every day. From the very moment 
our eyes open in the morning to the very moment that they are closed for the night. <coughs> our personal faith is like that of a tree. When the seed was planted, when it took root, it requires more than just dirt and water to grow. It has to have the nutrients in the soil. The nutrients we need each and every day is found in God's Word. That is what will help us to grow. That will give us the faith we need. And our faith will get stronger and stronger. But also as the tree, we also need to be pruned every once in a great while. Isaiah 7 and verse 8, Isaiah says, If you are not firm in faith, you will not be firm at all. Now is the time for us to evaluate our faith. Is it a saving faith? Or is it just a belief in something? And this is something that each and every one of us, no matter how faithful we seem to be. We need to always reevaluate our faith and continue to nurture it to grow. If you are not a child of God this morning, you're here because you have a believing faith. But you can take that faith another step. And then together we can work in building a personal faith. But without the first step, the rest will never happen. The repentance, confession, having your sins washed away in New Testament baptism, you can have that eternal life that is promised. And together, as a family, we build that faith and all of our faith so that when this day is gone, when this time on earth is, is no more, we will all be together in our home in heaven in one of those mansions that Jesus has built for us. If there's anyone that has a need this morning, we ask that you come as together we stand and we sing. Amazing grace.
appreciate everyone being here this morning. Um, if the men could meet up front for just a moment right after services, Rusty has some dates for our gospel meeting this spring, and he'd like to go over them and see what you all would think. So just a couple of minutes is all it would take. At uh, this time, we'll be dismissed with prayer. Father, we pray that you bless and with us. This day, we pray for this church. We pray for Every family is, is attending here. We pray for the ones who are sick. We pray for uh, Deborah and Ruth and Rick. They contend with her illness from day to day. We pray for the two deals and Tim Teen and Westmoreland. We pray for them every day. So we go to our others. Well, we're not well this morning, Heavenly Father. We pray for them that we recover their health and be with us once again. Heavenly Father, we pray for the church here. We pray for each one, we pray for us to have the faith that we heard about in the lesson this morning, a faith that was unending and true and lasting. Heavenly Father, we pray for our nation today. We are, our nation is uh, facing problems which are difficult times. We pray for our nation's leaders to lead this country in a way which will continue to have peace throughout this world. Heavenly Father, we pray for each home that's represented here today. You be listen, watch over, and care for us as we go this way. We pray that we pray that we will attend the worship service every time we're able to be here and be good examples to those around us, for our families to be with us, to watch over, and care for us. We pray now that you will be with us as we leave this place today. Bless us and care for us the next time we meet again in your name. We pray in the strong and lovely name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.